Hello, sir. Step right in. The store is open. Are you interested in a new and exciting book? It's a bookstore, sir. We sell books, postcards and some board games. It's called Crime, Romance and Biographies of Famous People. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold your horses, little girl. That is a book. They have stories inside them. It's like someone told you a story in a really long letter. A postcard? is a small cardboard picture. You can write a few words on the other side and send it to your friend or beloved. Board games are like little games on a table, made to pass the time. There are several different ones, but sailors here mostly buy cards. My pleasure. Anything else you'd like to know? Okay, sir. I'll try to answer any questions you have. I hope they're about books. My name is Annette, sir. My mum, her name is Plaisance. She owns the store. She's inside, minding the register, or organising the stock. Feel free to step in and browse our wares. I'm signalling that the store is open. Otherwise, people might not know. They'd miss out on the crime, romance and biographies of famous people. Oh, no, no, sir. I'm happy to help Mum by luring in customers. Besides, I have some hot juice in my vacuum bottle to keep warm. I do my studies at home at the moment. I have to help Mum keep this place running. School? Well, mine is a big yellow building on Boogie Street, and the people there run it. They say it's a charity. Mum says it's necessary to do both, because it builds character. Mum says a proper worker is dutiful. That's how you get ahead in life. You succeed. There is stress and unease behind these words. She's reciting etiquette. Mum says it's peachy. She was a little afraid at first. There's talk about this house being cursed. Cursed in the way that makes them say that no business has ever really thrived here, sir. That they all go... Exactly. But we've been doing fine so far. They shouldn't be, but they seem real. Anyhow, they say that these grounds are doomed for businesses. Of course, sir. Um... Crime fiction is about murders or burglaries or things like that, and the work of a policeman or a private detective who's trying to solve a crime and catch the criminals. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and it's kind of like a puzzle too. You can guess who the criminal is or how the good guys are going to catch him. You don't look much like a policeman. Didn't mean to offend, sir. Sorry, sir. It's just that you don't look like Dick Mullen. Head, yes. Not head, child. Heads. Isn't that very dangerous? Unlike you, sir. He's just a fictional character. He's no match for you. Maybe you can show me some real police work, sir. Like in the books. It's the type of book where there's a rich lady and she has to choose between the good man and the bad man. Or there could be a story about a poor lady getting a rich man. It's about man and lady business, sir. These are not very common. You can't have a choice between bad and bad. Nobody wants to read a story like that. Well, maybe then it's fine. Maybe if the lady then decides not to pick either, because she doesn't need a bad man. Yes, that would be interesting. It happens, but usually the guy gets rich in the process. Or should actually be rich himself, but has lost his family property unjustly, like during the revolution or something. Those are unhappy books for most of the pages. People sad about what they have lost, but then it all turns out just fine in the end. That's really not a proper romance story. That's more like everyday life. Not in romance books, sir. These are about nice and pretty people, and everyone is happy in the end. 
I haven't read many of those. Maybe you should ask Mum. I don't think it's a romance story if the main characters break up, though. Um, no, I don't know. Yes, she knows books, definitely. What was that? An idea for an unfinished novel stuck somewhere in your forebrain? Later, when you get the chance, you should address these issues by getting drunk. That'll show them. Maybe some of our other books? Oh, kings and queens and generals of old, or artists and writers, or musicians, those kinds of people. There's usually something extraordinary about them. I think that's why people read them, to find the secrets of their fame. Seems like most people who read those books fail to get more famous from reading them. But it does make the famous people more famous. Annette's expression remains ever so helpful, but she doesn't say anything. Okay. No, sir, I can't. It would be too tiring to refrain from it. It's already tiring enough to remember to say it all the time. It's nice of you to say I could stop, though. That's a friendly enough face, most of the time. The girl keeps her hands folded, hidden. Why is that? What do you mean, sir? She looks around anxiously. Her hands remain folded in front of her. She doesn't want to show them. The lieutenant stands by, looking at the two of you with little interest. She brings out her reddened hands, her nails frayed, nearly chewed down to the flesh. And you knew this from me keeping my hands folded? Well, that proves nothing. Anyone could do an easy deduction like that. She nods, half provocative, half enthusiastic. Maybe so, sir. Okay, I know it's a bad habit, and I shouldn't. It was okay, sir. There's more that can be achieved here. Ask her to do the same. You're quite sober. The lieutenant does not flinch at the comment. He does not flinch even a single bit. He is intensely not flinching. It takes effort. I'm sorry, sir. I hope things get better soon. There she stands, swaying on her feet, assaulted by the early spring breeze. She smiles at you. The whole situation suddenly feels familiar, somehow. This coin-operated viewer is facing southwest. Its coin slot is full of fossilized bubblegum, rendering the machine permanently inaccessible. A thick layer of graffito covers the lenses. You spell out the word ONUG written on the other side, with N and C scribbled backwards. Under the graffito, a sea of blues and greys appear. Behind the water lies a coast studded with concrete and reeds. On it, a church on stilts, lanky weather-worn wooden planks, an X-shaped cross topping its tower. You know this to be the star of Perikonassis, or the Cairo. The central symbol of the Perikonassian church, a star, a great moral height to be strived towards. Around the large wooden building you see chunks of sea ice gathered on the beach. 
and a small tent set up on the ice. The metal feels cold and wet under your palm. It looks unhygienic. Probably some kids. A simple but clever solution to ruin in a coin-operated viewer. It took ingenuity. This coin-operated viewer is facing south. The instruction manual says to insert 25 centims and pull the handle while looking inside. Then use the focus knob to zoom in if necessary. This coin, your money disappears into the coin slot, a clunk, the ring of metal. The curtains on the display open. You lean in to catch the view. It's blurry, different blues and greens. In the middle of the shimmer stands a drab gray shape, like a ghost. The lenses shift. The ghost sharpens into an islet in the bay. In the ruins, a man-made structure is visible, a half-sunken sea fort. It's concrete almost reconquered by nature. It looks as if it was abandoned quite some time ago. Nothing but a rotten tooth remains of the anti-aircraft tower. A lonely birch tree grows out of it. Really? I don't have the eyesight to make it out.
<laughs> the display rack is brimming with worn paperbacks featuring an extremely muscular, sword-wielding barbarian on the cover. Nearly all the titles contain the word Hiamdal somewhere. Rows and rows of Hiamdala men blur your vision. You make out some titles. Man from Hiamdal and the Mammoth Riders. Man from Hiamdal, Return to Hiamdal. And the solipsistic Man from Hiamdal and the Hiamdal Man. Maybe a hundred? Man from Hiamdal and the Sages at the End of the World. Man from Hiamdal and the False God. Man from Hiamdal and the Scorched Earth. Man from Hiamdal, the Hiamdal Colonies. Man from Hiamdal and the Swamp Beast. Man from Hiamdal and the Snow Crabs. Not even close. Man from Hiamdal in Hell. Man from Hiamdal and the Forest of Slaves. Man from Hiamdal under the lake. Man from Hiamdal, Hiamdal burning. There's even the Trial of Death. A pastoral combat game book set in the world of Yeomdalaman, and so much more. A twinge at the back of your head makes you flinch. Your eye starts twitching. Your hand reaches toward a book with glossy cover art of the very muscular man from Yeomdal in chains, kneeling in front of a staircase leading to a throne. A woman sits on the throne, leering at the man. Between the throne and the Hiamdala man lies a bonfire, casting shadows on the wall. The shadow of the woman's headdress looks like a pair of devil horns. The title reads, Man from Hiamdal and the Devil Woman. The display rack before you is burdened under piles of Man from Hiamdal novels. Oh! Man from Hjelmdal, a very popular series of adventure novels. They're awfully immoral and violent books. Blood and violence, scantily clad women, epic narratives, all those mystical things he encounters. They're bound to grab those with little imagination and nothing to do. What does it matter? They're all the same. However, the customer is always right, they say. If you're a novice of the series, I'd recommend Hjelm Dalaman, the man from Hjelmdal. It's supposed to be a good introduction to the series. A small mountain of colourful board game boxes. There are numerous types of games for all ages. A lot of shelf space seems to be taken up by Wirral related merchandise. An endless variety of source books, law books, and codices litter the table. The topmost book is titled Welkin Compendium, Second Edition. There's also a large hardbound tome with intricate cover art The Hunters of Catawack, Boreal Creature Compendium, and a Pick Your Path adventure game book titled. Tales of Wirral, Cavern of Velcrog. Books in a board game section? Who wants to read books? There's a box that says Wirral, third edition mega setting supplements module. The side panel notes a fantastic adventure board game, new maps and miniatures. A sticker on it displays 25 real. Wonderful board games, sir. The Viticulturist is a classic for sure, or perhaps you'd like Archipelagos of Insulinda, a very educational game for those interested in geography. Raubritta is a fun game of economic competition, but can get quite intense after a while. We have games for the whole family. You can play with your children. Don't be so hard on yourself, sir. You just need to clean up a bit. And technically, friends are a bit like family. For playing with friends, I'd recommend Suzerainity. It's a civilization building game where you build a civilization, then set off to brutally colonize and repress other civilizations. It'll cost 12 real. 
Lousy auras there. No, role-playing games are popular among those types. You know, who are into those kind of things. Personally, I don't like it. Not at all. I've heard they turn people into occult enthusiasts. That they have rituals where they try to summon entities. Highly immoral stuff. You can still buy them, though. This bookstore is not strictly about crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. There's also a wide range of paranatural literature. Amidst the various books, you find one written by someone named Matthias W. Dundas. It's about wholeness, unity, balance. These three things are very important to the working class mind. The point of the book, and many others on this shelf, is to give people medicinal advice in situations where they don't have access to paid health services. It serves platitudes while also telling everyone that traditional medicine, the kind people don't have access to and which costs more than this book, is garbage and would only give you cancer anyway, without even curing your cold or anything. Wholeness, unity, balance on the other hand, can basically take care of anything. Though it is important to note, when it's up to your mind to heal yourself, then it's because of your mind that you're ill in the first place. The book features chapters on topics such as how to find magnesium. It even lists plants you can harvest magnesium from. How to continue drinking if you're an alcoholic who has destroyed his liver and there's even a chapter on the ancient Serais tradition of using duck gall bladder preservatives to treat and prevent sexually transmitted diseases. Pre and post factum apply. Nothing worth buying. Hum, sir, please, no browsing in that shelf. That wisdom is not for free. I can't have you end up like opening a police store next door and stealing my customers. Oh no. Several maps have been attached to a bulletin board hidden inside the alcove. They're held up by small pins. The board has come loose from one corner. The maps look old and faded. Your eye catches a map of Insulinda, a map of Revachol, and a map of Martinez. This large map displays archipelagos. You see a constellation of small dots on the light blue emptiness of the Insulindic Ocean, the largest in the northeast is La Caillou, you are here. Another, far away in the southwest, Seminese Islands, Ile de Fantôme, Ozon, Laurentide, Fas Alamir, Archipelagos, North Arcade Islands, all just specks of dust on the vastness of the Insulindic. On the edges of the map, the color fades into a blur of dotted lines, black and white, disintegrating into mathematics. In the northeast, a dust mite stands on the north coast of Caillou in a bookstore. It's you. You can, on Caillou, Revachon, a single black star, on Ozon, Fondelier, and Vimandu, on Archipelagos, Croyan Moran, Villiers, on Seminine, Oldivai, and on Laurentide, Deora of the Seven Seas. 850 million people live on these little dots, an oceanic world of culture and commerce torn apart by history. The ocean breaks apart into a tangle of cosines and azimuths, all pointing into pale nothingness. Windy is the north azimuth. Grad is the northeast azimuth. Samara is the east azimuth. Seo is the west azimuth. Isolas, they're called. Connections to other worlds, words past the Insulindian, unknown to you. You only know you've never been there. 
You have little idea what they are. Distant stars. Gods. But looking at them makes you feel almost non-existent. Whatever they are, the Isolas are immeasurably large compared to you and very, very far away. Perhaps they are gods. Gods of distance and outer dust. The north coast of a verdant island is shattered by the delta of a river. It is the River Esperance. Countless bridges put the shards back together, connecting city blocks to river islands. La Delta says a great artificial heart in the center, teeming with life forms and construction. To the east, rolling hillsides, Le Jardin, Stella Marie, the suburbs of Saint Baptiste, swallowed up into the megacity. They sound rich to you. This is Rivershall East. Hudon, it's somewhere to live, not bad. Then there's Jamrock, it's bad. People shouldn't live there, but they do. Then Forberg, it's almost as bad and much larger. Then Coal City, it's the worst. It's so small you can't even see it on the map. No, wait, there it is, north of Jamrock, the strip of coast next to the Greater Rivershall Industrial Harbour. It looks downright despondent. It's almost Coal City, to be honest. No, this is somewhere to be. This is all you have, but it's still something. Streets and sodium lights, the sky, the world, you're still alive. It's not really a map, it's a tourist thing. A picture postcard with buildings on it, drawn from an isometric perspective. A date in the upper right corner says 48. Still, it's detailed. Could be pretty useful for scouting ahead. You see the jagged boxes of an industrial harbor, even the whirling in rags there. I'm sorry, officer. The map of Martinez is the only one available. The other two are not for sale anymore. And besides, you could scarcely afford them. They're quite valuable, though they might not look it. The map of Martinez is 90 cents, though. That old thing? It's an out-of-date map of a tourist location that never was nor came to be. From when some design studio people tried to spruce the place up four or five years ago, they also renovated the horse statue, set up those coin-operated viewers, and designed the new street lamps. The place does not look like a successful tourist trap, does it? They didn't get that far, for some reason. A shame the project never got going. Would be nice if someone fixed Martinez up. All these ruins are bad for business. Always good to be informed of your surroundings. The plaque on the shelf reads, Biographies of Famous People. You see a large variety of names, none of which ring a bell. Browsing through all the books with all their names makes your head spin. None of these seem important or relevant. It's all just vapid egoism. Suddenly, a particularly odd title catches your eye. It reads, High Speed Love, The Tragic True Love Story of Jacob Irv and Alfie Delatraz by one Cecilia Averbrook. High Speed Love chronicles the romance between two of the finest tip-top tournée racers in history. One of them is the madcap driver, Jacob Irv. His blonde mane graces the cover. Next to Irv's life story, you see a slim biography of an Occidental rock star called The Anti-Star. He's famous for shooting morphine into one of his eyeballs and cocaine into the other. Next to that, River Sholian radio personality Guillaume Bevy stands in front of a rundown drug den. He's a permanent fixture on Channel 8, reporting on real-life crime and ruining cops' days. I really must insist you buy one of the books. Reading them is not for free. Do still browse, though, but not too long. I'm sorry, I did not mean to rush you. You are browsing. Go ahead. Take your time. Time is commerce. I would say... The Greatest Innocence. Yes, most certainly. It's an important educational tool delving into the depths of history, religion, and their relation to innocentic power a very influential historical figure 
But surely I don't have to tell you that. You're a law officer and law officers have at least some education. The book is also very daring. The author aims to re-examine the universal understandings of the innocentic system, creating a fresh vantage point and a shift in the tired order of things. Perhaps for a layman, deep analysis is necessary to peel back the multi-layered meanings. Do her words seem vague and abstract to you? Certainly, it's prudent for a person to have at least an elementary understanding of history and society. Imagine the chaos we'd be in otherwise. You feel like you should get this one. Definitely. It's important somehow. There's something personal inside. These shelves are overburdened with books from the same series. You see the name Dick Mullen over and over. Crime fiction is a disgrace. An asinine misrepresentation of the physical attributes of the arduous everyday work of actual police officers. These books greatly overstate the excitement of police work, glossing over how long it takes to actually follow up on leads and eliminate dead ends. What's more, they completely ignore the psychological hardships of year after year coming into contact with people during the worst days of their lives. Not a single mention of all the stress this work creates upon the officer's family. Detective fiction just doesn't tell the truth at all. Now, would you like a list of all the books found on the shelf? You see, Dick Mullen on the job. Get me Mullen. The Stalwart Adventures of Richard P. Mullen. Dick Mullen and the Murder in the Orchard. The Sordid Affair of Dick Mullen. A killing is declared. Dick Mullen in the Murder House. The Final Case of Dick Mullen. An Obvious Lie. Dick Mullen in the Clock Tower. The Ordeals of Dick Mullen. Dauntless Dick. Dick Mullen's Funeral Pyre. The Murder of Dick Mullen. Oh no, turns out he faked it to solve a case. Yes, there's also the dame who did it. Farewell, my Mullen. Faking death seems to be a common trope in the Mullen series. The morbid tales of Dick Mullen. A dark tide turns. Tragedy calls for Dick Mullen. Another one with fake death. And, of course, Dick Mullen, the murderer. In order to catch a murderer, Dick Mullen must become the murderer. After all this, you still haven't found the answer to the one question that matters. Who is Dick Mullen? Your attempt to grasp at the answer fails. It seems very close by, pulsating just out of reach. Oh, crime robberies, murders, even sexual crimes. We're fortunate to have Dick Mullen and his stories to sort all that out. You're a, a police officer, apparently. You should buy all of these. They really do teach a person how to be a proper detective. You see a set of tattered curtains blocking the way to another room. A strange cage-like trinket dangles from the curtains. Excuse me, officer. The back room is strictly for employees only. You see some kind of charm. An irregular polyhedron assembled from bones, sticks and straw. Inside, a disturbing fish head with empty eye sockets stares at you. This is a traditional Seminese ward, meant to provide protection against ill luck, bad dreams, curses, and other supernatural scourges. Inhabitants of Ile de Fantôme, the Seminine Islands down south. Aside from poking at it suspiciously, there is nothing else to do with the fish head charm at this time. The curtains remain shut before you. Nothing. Now please go back to browsing the books. Don't you feel compelled to look at the books? The books are all you care about. She speaks almost as if she's trying to put a spell on you, urging you to buy more books. Oddly enough, the more she tries to draw you away from the curtains, 
the more alluring they become. Welcome to Crime, Romance and Biographies of Famous People. My name is Plaisance. Be welcome and please take responsibility for the energy you bring into this space. I am the proudest owner of our little shop of culture. Goodness, you were already doing good browsing the shelves. Why'd you stop? Don't you feel compelled? Go, go, get back there. The books await you. Everything is on the shelves. Take a look yourself. The shelves compel you, don't they? She smiles and nods, seemingly relieved. Cursed? Who said that? Annette? I will have a word with her. This place is not cursed. It has a robustly magnetic energy. Good for commercial activity. My business is thriving, sir. What in God's name is she talking about? Annette, yes, my daughter. I hope she wasn't slacking off again with her nose in science fiction. Tell me, was she at her post doing her job like a proper girl? Wonderful. Did you talk to her? Great. On a scale of one to ten, how compelled were you to buy books after talking with her? Come now, it's not personal. It's about proper sales practices and market research. I expect an answer. My precious, her dedication brings joy to my heart. If you have children, I hope they turn out as great as my Annette. You must be kidding. There's nothing like that happening. Good, sir. What does a young child do with money anyway? No, I save it for her as a fund. She's securing her financial future out there. Such criminal behavior would not happen in more developed countries. Those countries will realize they've raised a lazy and spoiled generation. Are we done with the jokes now? Yes, we've had quite enough fun here. Right. God, ugh. I've told her not to do that. It's such a disgusting habit. She'll, she can if she has enough willpower. This is what's called growing pains. Life isn't easy. Life doesn't give breaks. Come on, ma'am. It's obvious she can't do anything about it. You are placing an unnecessary burden on a young child. She stands stiff and severe, silently fuming. Ten or so seconds pass without change. She's looking for one. But there simply aren't any good arguments for being an asshole. Oh no. Hold on. I need to invite her inside and apologize. She must be freezing out there. There. I don't know what to say to you. My husband, he tries to teach me business lessons. I have what my mother called a dull mind. All this stress. Yes, my husband is a successful entrepreneur east of the river. If only he were more involved in the business we're running up here. No matter. Soon we'll both be off for Grand Couron. It's a proper place to live. One of the most peaceful neighbourhoods east of Jamrock. You may know it for its massive housing projects. Most of the buildings are empty at the moment. It's a great opportunity to get ahead of the crowds. Better times ahead for sure. He made the initial investment. Since then he's been what you might call a silent partner. Super silent. Almost inaudibly so. Yes, I'm afraid so. A real treat she is. It would be nice if she had... No, we couldn't have afforded more children, really. Not in this economy. A glimmer of sadness blinks through the well-crafted exterior. We're quite busy people, you know, my husband and I. Quite busy. Children are a lot of work. You don't look like a father so I don't expect you to understand. I'm sorry, I'm sure you do understand. She's been too busy helping me here, so she studied at home this trimester. This is a temporary solution, of course. I assure you, I of all people understand the importance of education. She will be back in school the moment the store takes off. 
The woman looks aloof, her features much softer. Occasionally, she glances at her daughter's silhouette. I'm sorry, sir. I can't talk right now. I'm very busy with my homework. I have so much homework now. You just can't win. Out of the rain and into the gutter. Math. It's really difficult. Like, really. They say you need it to get rich. Better than standing outside in the cold, I guess. Oh, oh, I found something while you were away. I thought this would fit you. Like, thanks for helping out. Not me. The city, I mean. Like a detective does. Just what Dick Mullen would ask. I got it from behind the curtains. I'm not really supposed to go there. Maybe. It's the hat Dick Mullen wears all the time. You'll look way more serious with that. Right, I have to get back to my homework now. Before Mum notices. Man, this is hard. You have absolutely no idea. Familiar? How? You must have forgotten something you heard again. The worn map features the patchwork grid of the streets of Martinez with directions to appropriately touristy locations. Year 48 resides on the upper right corner. Your finger moves through the various streets, across Rue de saint Ghislaine and Rue saint sipa over saint Brun and Martinez North. Finally, come into a halt on the spot where you are currently standing. Although the map gives no such indication itself. Curtains, tattered with age and covered in dust, hang before you, as if taunting you. Just as you're about to pull apart the curtains, the petrified voice of the shop owner cries out once more. Sir, don't touch that. I told you it's off limits for the customers. Parapsychologically speaking, we're dumb if you decide to open them. I won't be held responsible for the consequences. It's too dangerous. She looks away, mumbling. Why is everyone always messing with the curtains? Why can't they just buy books like normal people? No, it's just a storeroom for the employees, I told you. Now please step away from the curtains. Why? It's not like anyone was killed there. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be so impolite. Just please don't go there. I can't allow that. You'll only make things worse and unleash the powers. You do? My God, even more reasons not to mess with the curtains. Just step away, dear sir. Thank you. Let's just talk about this first, all right? There's no reason for you to venture into the unknown. Talking is always good. Go see what she has to say. The curtains, tattered with age and covered in dust, hang before you as if taunting you. Hello again, esteemed officer, and welcome to crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. I already told you, it's just a storage room for employees. I don't understand why it's so important to you. Just let it go, officer. Go buy some goddamn books. You're supposed to be drawn to the books. It's just for decoration. Okay, fine. It's because this place is cursed. Just like Annette said, they don't call it the doomed commercial area for nothing. Are you happy now, officer? 
happy that you've ruined everything? The curse is so much worse than you could imagine. It's a disease eating at the very foundation. It's the curse of financial distress, of ruin and bankruptcy. It's not just that, officer. We're dealing with something supernatural here. It's the cacodemons feeding off bad business practices and disappointing income statements. There's something wrong with this building, I can tell you. Ever since I arrived, I've sensed an eerie lingering presence, as if I was unwanted here. It's not good to talk about the curse, not in detail. The negativism, it's dangerous. Talking about the void wraiths angers them. Wow, void wraiths. You have new words. Yes, I've contacted numerous parapsychologists and even a pair of Simonese mediators. They provided me with the wards. The wards help to keep the doom at bay and protect us against the darkness that lies further in the building. Even though now I fear, it's not enough. Oh, this? No, it's a special Hymian amulet, blessed by desert pygmy shamans with a spell of compulsion. It's to compel people to buy books. There are numerous spells cast throughout the store. I had the books anointed with a different inducement spell, for example. It's guaranteed to boost sales 15%. Desert pygmy shamans. That sounds like a rather questionable way to describe a group of people. Most certainly not. I don't want anyone who's not familiar with the psychic arts to get involved in this mess. Stay away. Leave the spirits be so they can return to their slumber. My liege, you know what this case calls for? A paradetective. Okay, but please, only a few questions. You wouldn't want to disturb the spirits. The woman looks aloof, her features much softer. Occasionally, she glances at her daughter's silhouette. Slither up to her, you silver-tongued fiend. Show her what world-class perfidy looks like. Are you sure? Don't think I haven't seen charlatans before. You're no paradetective. You look nothing like one. And you're clearly a drinker. Pardon me for being so blunt, but... You look like one. Hey now, hey, hey, hey. You need the booze to focus, all right? The lieutenant keeps his usual stony calm. He silently picks out his notebook. How do you know all this? Here we go. You're part Simonese. Oh, it means our meeting couldn't have been mere chance. The hand of fate guides us. But I am not the only one at risk. I have to think of my daughter. You are certain you can help us, keep us safe? I can't allow any collateral damage to hit us. If you promise, good officer, then you might be our last hope. Do you swear it? Thank you, sir. There's one more thing I haven't told you about yet. The Entity. Do not act surprised. You know of these things, sire. You have? The Entity takes the form of a woman, a witch, probably. I've suspected that she must be connected to the curse ever since I first saw her. Did you know that she lives inside the chimney? Yes, that chimney is part of the building's central furnace, and it's enormous. She has barricaded herself behind some metal security curtains. God knows what she's doing there. Some unnatural magic, I assume. You should go find the entity and ask what happened to all the companies in the building. What is the source of this curse? Here's the key to the warded door behind the curtains. Take it. Oh, and please do return to me after you've looked round. I'm quite anxious to know what she has to say about the curse, what you discover in there. Unbelievable darkness and ruin. (laughs) 
you see a set of tattered curtains blocking the way to another room. A strange cage-like trinket dangles from the curtains. You see a dimly lit room full of dusty furniture and trash. A doorway stands in the back, covered in dozens of scary little Sebanese wards, your shadow looming over it like an omen. A heavy door with a missing handle stands before you, covered in dozens, if not hundreds, of Semenese so trinkets and charms. It appears to be locked. Only an echo. No one is there. After exerting some force, you manage to turn the key. It's eerily silent. The door slides slightly open, letting a draft of cold air into the room. Special thanks to my patrons, Justin Wood, Hobbs, Koopy, Vegeta, Gunrunner, Water, and Bat. You can join my patrons at patreon.com slash holdengatsby, follow me on Twitter at holdengatsby, and follow my Twitch at twitch.tv slash holdengatsby. Don't forget to subscribe to both of my channels. Thanks for watching. Bye.